It's now about six years since I first featured this extremely dangerous product that is commonly available on eBay. Sadly, it is still available on eBay. Let me demonstrate it first, and then I'll show you why it's so dangerous. So it's basically, it's a camping light that you can use this spotlight at the end, or if you slide the cover up, it lights this sort of area light inside and automatically shuts off when it goes in. And you can also charge USB devices. It's got a solar panel on top. It turns out the solar panel with just six cells, putting out about three volts, is probably only just for that little red LED there that you can see glowing. Um, but you plug it into the mains and you can charge it from the mains supply. In this case, 240 volts. But watch, watch what happens. If I plug something into the USB port, just leave this sticking out a bit so I can actually get a connection onto it. it shows about 4.08 volts. And we plug this into a outlet on this generic Chinese tester and then rather than go from earth to the output of this because that would trip the RCD or GFCI I shall go turn this on and I shall put this into the neutral and I shall go on to the grounded output of this and the LED well the LED the lamp it's a tungsten lamp it lights up showing the output of that is live at mains voltage that is a huge issue because it means that if you uh, were to have this plugged into the mains charging, or worse still, a small child was to have it into the mains charging, and you were to use your phone and it didn't have uh, one of the sort of generic covers over it, it was just a bare metal case, because the case of phones tends to be a metal internal skeleton, so to speak. Then when you plugged it in, the metal skeleton would become live at mains voltage. And if you touched a grounded object or you were grounded, your hand would clamp onto your phone and you would not be able to let go. Um, and it could result in electrocution. Let's take a look inside this. These have been available for so long. I'd be interested to see if anything really radical has changed. So let's take a, a look in the bottom first. We have the... Typical Luxian Star style LED. I was going to say it would been okay for bits, but even the reflector is really bad quality. It has a little tactile switch here. Hold on, let's unscrew that. Well, let's just unscrew the whole thing. I shall take the little switch off first. It's got a little clicky tactile switch, which uh, is controlling the lights inside. And that uh, is pressed by a ramp. When you slide this up, a little ramp down here presses that in. Um, to get it further apart, you take this screw out at the back. I'm trying to remember how these things came apart. And once you've taken this screw and its packer out, big long screw, then everything else should more or less come apart, I think. Yep. Revealing the charge circuitry. Um, with its uh, capacitive dropper going straight, at, and the circuitry is just going straight out to the USB. Under the solar panel, there will be, uh, hold on, let's get that off. The typical nickel metal hydride cells, I think, the nickel metal hydride. Let's see if we can get this panel off. So there they are. Uh, right here, I'll tell you what. It is just three nickel metal hydride type cells. Tell you what, I'm going to take this out and reverse engineer it. I'll be back in one moment. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete, and as always with these products, it was full of exciting treats. If we take a look at the circuit board, there's not much on it. If anything, there's this superfluous diode, which is not needed because they've not used it at all. That must have upset their accountant. And the supply to this circuit board comes in here. One leg goes straight to the bridge rectifier, the other leg goes via a dropper capacitor with a discharge resistor across it so you don't get little nasty tingles off the pins of the plug. That then goes to the other end of the bridge rectifier and that goes straight out to the mystery cells that might be nickel metal hydride but they might not be rechargeables. But it goes straight out there and the USB port and the LEDs. There's an LED here for showing the charging status of the 1K resistor in series and it will light when it's charging and also when the solar panel makes it light. But that's all the solar panel does. Let's take a look at the schematic. So here's the incoming supply on this very, very excruciatingly thin cable that is copper-coated steel. 
So that's going to have a nice high resistance, especially given how thin it is. That's going to burst into flames if things go wrong. The solar panel is also notable for being plastic instead of a fiberglass one with six tiny little slivers, uh, putting out three volts at 20 milliamps, which is all that's needed for this particular application. So the incoming supply uh, goes to the bridge right far, direct on one leg. Uh, if this is live, then that poses the highest risk of getting a bad electric shock. If the live goes to this one, it's all Basically, it's Russian roulette, which way around this plug goes. It will be via this capacitor, and you'll get a shock, which will be significant, but not uh, probably about 20-ish milliamps, which is not let go current, but not also not trip the RCD or GFCI current in some instances. So it's limited by this capacitor on each half cycle, goes to the bridge rectifier, no capacitor, it goes straight to the mystery cells. I did put these in my... Nickel metal hydride, well, universal battery charger, and it instantly, well, it, I, it ran the test and it said 10 milliamps, and I thought, that's not right. So I thought, I'll give them all a charge, and it just instantly rejected all three of them. Uh, not sure what these are. The voltage seems quite high out the packet, so to speak, for nickel metal hydride. I have a horrible feeling they're alkaline or zinc chloride that have just been badged up to look like that. There's the uh, stack of cells, whatever they are. There's the USB port, and there's the LEDs for the uh, spotlight and the area light with their switches but no resistors because they're just relying on the impedance of the cells here. There's the charge indicator LED with its 1K resistor and when it's charging from the mains, this end LED is positive but uh, this end will be alternating positive and negative as the AC polarity changes and will make it light up when it's charging from that. But there's also the little tiny solar panel which is connected directly across the LED and resistor so that it makes the LED light without putting any current into these mystery cells at all. Maybe that's a good thing, although it's already getting current put in by the charger. There's the diode that's not actually used. They connected that lead straight to the positive. I'm guessing that originally a diode was considered needed to protect against uh, damaging the solar panels with a high reverse voltage or something like that. Uh, but having said that, the voltage from this circuit will be capped theoretically by the cells that it's trying to charge so they've just basically omitted that diode they've not connected it and that means they can get away with one less sliver of silicon to actually make the led light up uh, it's very odd very strange so there we have it it's an interesting i guess it's a ripoff of someone else's product and they've just made it super cheap uh, to the point of basically almost being hilariously cheap and nasty and dangerous so I wonder if these have caused accidents. eBay, if you go in the listing, says report this listing uh, and it gives you the option, it gives you four options, copyright and trademark, listing practices, price gouging and prohibited and restricted items. The only one of those that comes close is prohibited and restricted items. It's not, it's a dangerous item. When you go to that option, it's just things like bits that you've stolen off people's graveyards and then sold gravestones and then sold on eBay and other and guns and things like that but nothing really obviously for reporting a dangerous product there's a possibility they may have considered that at some point but didn't do it because of the number of people who just basically look for anything to report everything but there we go interesting and scary product i'll do some more tests on the cells and we'll see what happens but uh, that is it it's quite a spicy dangerous thing it's been on sale so far for six years and there's probably no sign of it being taken down any time in the near future. So there we go. Interesting stuff.